All right, I'm going to fire up Skype. Can you hear me in Ridgeville? Okay. Um, all right, let me go and share my screen. If I remember right, if I remember right, there's two things that we have to go over with this. And of course we can we can go over um, other things if you have questions on them. The two things that I definitely want to go over are the um, what happens when we click edit and how that works. We've covered a lot of that already because the editing and the um, adding is very similar. All right, But I do want to cover that and I also want to cover what happens when we open up the app again a, a second time. So we'll cover those two things and then what I want to do is I want to walk through the process of um, changing this so it actually um, that, so that checkbox for deletion actually works. If you remember, I, I had said that I would put a checkbox in for deletion, but I had not changed the code to do the deletion. So what I'm going to do today is we will uh, work together on it and we'll, we'll talk through changing the code and what we need to do to do that. All right. So. If I go and run this, let's go and run this. There we go. We're going and we're installing it. And here we go. And this is a different tablet, by the way. I, uh, or I uninstalled it or both. So that's why we're not seeing anything here for the, for the searches. And I can put in a search. So I'll put in Android. And I'll tag my query with an A. And then I'll put in iOS. And I'll tag my query with Apple. So I have these two queries. Now, Notice what happens when I press edit. When I press edit on A, let's say, the two text boxes get populated with that. From here on in, the rest of it is pretty much the same with one little quirk. If, for example, I were to code this and say Android development and click save, it'll save it under the old tag. If, however, I click A, whoops, I didn't want to do that. If, however, I click edit and I change the tag, it actually creates a new tag. And um, I have a feeling that the developer that wrote this chapter of Deedle's book um, didn't feel like fixing that. All right? 
and did what all great developers do and claim that it's a feature of this application. It's supposed to work that way. It allows for easy cloning of things. So I could, for example, you know, type in CB and do Cleveland Browns, then bring up that same one and do CI and change it to Cleveland Indians, and I would clone it like that. So that's the claim, I believe, in the textbook, but I have a feeling they, they just are teaching you that technique of claiming it as a feature. So let's go and view that. And to view that, obviously we have to look at the code on that button's listener, right? Because that button's listener, ah, this button's listener is what initiates the process of taking the, the values from the shared preferences, stuffing them back in the text box, we make our edits, and we can click save. <clears throat> so, let's look at, first of all, and this is a good thing to review, let's look at the on click, let's look at how that button got created. It's a good thing to review, I think, because this is one of the significant things of this application. Let me go and, oops, didn't want that, didn't want that. Oh, I'll make tag GUI. All right. This is where that row gets created. If you remember, this particular table is not static. It doesn't have simply one row in it. It has however many rows that we put into it. So it's a dynamic, the GUI is dynamic. We, we add a row each time through. So this is a snippet of code that adds that row to the table. <coughs> all right? So what do we do? We first of all, we inflate that, or we create our inflator. Think of our inflator again as a view factory. It's this classes and this object's job to take our XML file and to make an actual view object from it. So you could think of the XML file as sort of a dehydrated view, all right? And the view factory or inflator brings it to life, all right? <clears throat> So here's where we create our new view by running the inflator and giving it the XML file for that new row. To refresh our memories, we had two layout files in this example. We had our main one, which is sort of the main view, and then we had a new tag view, which represents the XML for the new row that we're inserting. It's like a template, right. But it's a template for the new dynamic piece that we're going to add. Exactly. So, by inflating that, we're creating an actual new physical view that later on we can put in our main view, in our main GUI. So because we did that Exactly. Exactly. We have this view at this point. We have this view that, if you will, is sort of floating in space. <laughs> All right? We've created a view object, but we haven't done anything to it. It's sitting in memory? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's an object that's living on the heap, and it's waiting to be put somewhere. Now, think of it this way. Um, I, didn't, I didn't ask for this, but imagine if I had changed the... Um, rock, paper, scissors assignment, which I'm not going to do, all right? But I could have a, one, a win column and a loss column, right? Right now I just have a results. And I could instead have the games that you won, the games that you lost, and the games that were a draw. I could have three columns. So I would create the same view in that, but then later on I would decide where to put that result. So I could create the view and then down here, where I add that view, I could decide to put it in table A, table B, or table C. So we create the view. It's sitting out there in memory until we decide what, 
we're going to do with it. Now in this case, just like in your homework assignments, it's straightforward. We're going to create that view and we're going to go and add it to um, the one table that we do have. So, we've created the view. What type of view do we get when we inflate that XML file? We get a view, that's true, but we actually get a specific view. We get a ta well, we get a table row. So if we look at the, the XML file, we have a table row. That's what we get. Now, are they, so are they just getting the, are they just assigning to the top level class? The exactly, the exactly. Well, the inflator doesn't know what kind of view it's going to make. It's going to make a view. Okay. So the, this function, inflate, returns a view. Now, it's just like the function that we have, get, um, uh, find view by ID, that returns a view. Now, why don't we cast this view to a table row here, whereas here we cast the view to a button? The reason that we don't cast that view to a table row is we really don't need to. We're not going to do any table row specific things to it. All right? Okay. I'm not seeing your screen on Skype. <laughs> okay, let's go. Precious Steiner wants to add me with a contact. I, I don't think I'm going to say yes to that one. That's not a student. Not that I know of. It is funny, one of my first uh, terms, I got an email from what I would consider a fairly embarrassing email to send to your professor, the email uh, address. And I even told the person, it's like, like, you know, like, you can get free email addresses. So, you know, this is before LC had their own. It's like, you can get your free email address. Yeah. Are you okay now? Martin, can you see? You see yourself now. Oh, okay. So you're seeing my screen. All right, there you go. All right. So as I was saying here, we don't cast it to a table row because we don't need to treat this as a table row. Whereas in the other cases, we need to treat it as a button, so we cast it as a button. So when we're done with this statement, we got that new tag view floating in space. And what does that new tag view contain? It contains what's in the XML. And what's in the XML? Well, there's two buttons and a checkbox. The checkbox we're not doing anything with yet, but we will at some point. All right. So, we can use the same method, find view by ID, to find the individual pieces of that new view that we created. Okay? So, if I can sketch this, let me see if I have a sheet of paper and a pen. We have our main view that consists of our text box, our save button, and our other text box. And it consists of a table. All right? Right now, we've created a table row that contains a button, another button, and a checkbox. All right? Now, we have to go and we have to set the text on this button to be the name of the tag. So we have to set it to AND. We have to set the text of this button to edit, which it probably already was defined as. And we have to set on click listeners to both of these guys. We don't really have to do anything with the, the checkbox. 
So we have this, this view, this table row floating in space. We have to grab pointers to the, the, these buttons so that we can assign them their label, assign the first one its label, and assign an on-click listener to each of them. So that's what we do here. We grab a pointer to the button. This is very similar to the code that we had before. The difference is we're not looking for it in the main view. All right. Remember, back up here, where we grab a pointer to the text box, we don't say, we just say find view by ID. That implies the main view of the content view for this activity. Here instead we say find within that new view the button which has an ID of new tag view. So we're going to look in our new view, that new view, what's it called? New tag view. We're going to look in here and look for the thing that has that ID which is button number one. So now we have a pointer to that button. And we cast that pointer to a button. Right? We got to cast it because we want to do button things to it. All right? Remember when object-oriented things, you have your superclass, your parent class, and your subclass. A Subclass can do additional things that the superclass can't. A subclass can have additional attributes that the superclass doesn't. So there's a certain number of methods that exist for views. But there's some additional methods that exist for buttons. And two of those methods are set text and set on click listener. So if we didn't cast it to a button, all right, it wouldn't be able to use these methods because it would be looking for those methods on the view class. All right. So we grab a pointer to the button. We set the text to be the tag and we set the on click listener to be the query button listener. We do the same thing with the second button, except we don't need to set the label for it because the label is simply going to be the word edit. So that's hard-coded, or kind of hard-coded, in the XML file. But we do need to set the listener for the edit button. In other words, when we click the edit button, all right, when we click the edit button, we want to fire up the editing process. We want to go and take those values and stuff them back in the text boxes so that they can edit. So, we've done that. We've properly assigned the label to this guy and the on-click listener to both. But it's still floating in space until we say I want to add to that table layout which is this section of the main content area, I'm going to add that to the table that is there. And we talked a little bit about this last week. The index relates to the position we want to put it in. Because if you remember when we add a new tag, it gets popped in the right alphabetical order. So this function, make tag GUI, not only contains a tag, it contains the index or the position that that guy is going to get put. All right. So the bottom line of all this is that when we're set, this edit button has an on-click listener, and that on-click listener is cleverly enough called the edit button listener. So, let's find the edit button listener. If I scroll here, here we go is the edit button listener. 
All right. Again, like any other click listener, it gets past a view. What is that view again? It's the actual button that got clicked. It's the actual view that got clicked. And in our case, it's a button. All right? Because remember, we assign the same on click listener, listener to every one of our edit buttons. So if I have 25 edit buttons there, all 25 of them use this on click listener. So we have to be able to differentiate and distinguish which of those buttons got clicked. So how do we know that? Well, the argument to this on click method is the actual guy that got clicked, the actual view that got clicked. So, what do we do? We cast, we, we know that, we know that that button belongs to a table row. Okay? We know that button belongs to a table row because we put that in as part of a table row. We call get parent. All right? What do you suppose get parent does? What do you suppose get parent does in lay people's terms? The get parent tells me what view contains that view. So let's look. Let's sketch this out again. And we'll talk about the parents here. Remember, our view looks like this. And there's a couple of text boxes, a button, another text box. Then we have a scroll. Inside the scrollable is a table. Inside the table is a series of table rows. And inside the table rows, there's two buttons and a checkbox. Two buttons and a checkbox. So, if I say, what is the parent of this button? That's what I'm doing right here, right? If I clicked on this button, I get a pointer to the button that I clicked on. I'm asking what parent, what the parent of this button is. What I'm really asking is, I want a pointer to the row that this guy's in. All right? If I click this button, I'll get a pointer to this row. So when I say, the view's parent, I mean what view contains this. Because all your views in your main content view, your views can be nested. So we have views inside of views inside of views. So in this case, this button is in this table row. So the button's parent is this table row. The table row's parent is a table. The table's parent is the scrollable, and the scrollable's parent is the main content view. And again, it's just like nesting in HTML. All right? So, when I click on one of these buttons, I know the row that got clicked on. Why do I need the row that got clicked on? Why do I need to know that? I need to know, I need to pull from this button the tag. Because I'm going to take that tag and put it up in this edit text box. And then I'm going to look up, in, look up in my shared preferences and put the query in this text box. So, if I click on this button, I'm going to grab a pointer to that row. I'm then going to grab the text from that button and put it up here. I'm then going to grab from the shared preferences the query that belongs to that tag and I'm going to stuff it in the other text box. So I click edit and sure enough 
iOS goes there and the tag goes there. So let's, let's see in the code if we can understand how that's doing it. The key to remember here is this view is the actual button that got clicked. So when we ask for that button's parent, we are getting a pointer to the table row that contains that button. So when we talk about a view's parent, we talk about what view contains that view. And in this case, the table row contains the button. So I can then look inside of that table row using find view by ID and I can pluck out a reference, I can get a pointer to that new tag button. So I get a pointer to that button that contains the tag. I then pull that tag, whoops, I then pull that tag from the text of the button. So in this case I pull apple from the button. I then stuff the tag edit text box. I set the text of it using the tag and I use the save preferences to find the query that belongs to that tag. So let's visit this code again. We find the row that V is the button that got clicked. We use the button that got clicked to determine the row that got clicked. Right? Every UI in element inherits from view because we can nest things inside of other things. Maybe not indefinitely, right? We couldn't nest an image inside of a text box, but we can nest a, a text box within a table, for example, or within a table row, and that table row could be in whatever. All right? Yeah, it is. It is. It's definitely, you know, if you think about it, you know, a, what is a view? A view is a user interface element. And you start off with your main view, your main content view. That's the main screen that the user sees. And there could be a bunch of stuff inside of that. Well, each area itself can have stuff inside of that. We have a table inside a scrollable that's inside the main view. Then there's rows within that table. Then there's buttons within that row. So again, you're absolutely right. All of these are views, and they're nested in a certain way to make our GUI work. All right, so V is the button that got clicked. That happens automatically just by the nature of an on-click listener in the Android framework. We use the button got click, that got clicked to find the table row that owns that button, that the button is in. We then use our old friend, find view by ID which if I was enrolled in an advanced, or not an advanced, but an intro to Android class, and I had a quiz to take this week, which I probably forgot to announce, but I did announce online. It's on Angel. Yeah. Then I would be sure I understood what Find View by ID did if I was taking that quiz as a hint. What I'm doing is I'm looking for it, but I'm looking for it within that table row. Right? That's how I can find it. Because if you remember, every one of these buttons has the same ID. But that ID is unique within a table row. So I can find that tag button within the table row that's the parent of the button that I clicked. I use that to pull the text from the button because the text of the button is a tag. I set the tag text box and I look in shared preferences to pull up the text or the query that belongs to that tag. So now we're sitting here. Now we're sitting here 
ready, ready to edit that. And I can go change it, whatever, and I can click Save again. Now when I click Save again, we're back to the old code that I saw, that we looked at last time. Where we... Excuse me. Where we validate that there's something in both fields. If there is, we call our make tag method, give it the text box from the edit, give it the text box from the tag. Make tag goes and looks for it in shared preferences. So we get the query, we have the query and the tag. It looks for the tag in shared preferences. And then it puts it into shared preferences. So if the tag stays the same, the tag stays the same, then we're simply overwriting what was there before. That put will simply overwrite what's there before. And if the tag stayed the same, then this original query is going to find the query that we entered before, and there'd be no need to refresh the buttons, right? If I change Apple from iOS to Apple iOS or something like that, all right, the, the query associated with it, then I don't really need to add a new button, so it doesn't. If, however, I change the tag from Android to Android development or whatever, then it's not going to find anything under the new tag name. It is going to go and put that new tag out there, so the old tag will still be there because we haven't overwritten it, and the new tag will be added, and then I'll create a new button. So that's what accomplishes that little bit of funky functionality of if you change a tag, it keeps the old one and it inserts a new one. Questions about that? The bigger thing here, remember we're always looking at these examples and trying to say, well, okay, that's fine, that's how this one works, but what's the bigger question here? The bigger question is how I'm navigating through, or how the code is navigating through, and grabbing pointers to the stuff that it needs. All right? We need to know what to put in the text box when they click one of the edit buttons. How do we determine what gets put in the text box? Well, we have to determine which row got clicked. We know which button got clicked, we have to determine which row got clicked. We then have to pull the tag from that row. We then look up in shared preferences to find the query that belongs to that tag, and then we stuff those two in the text boxes. So just how we navigate through and use these pointers to point to the different things in the UI is important. What's different about this one is in the first couple of examples we had, it was really straightforward because we only had, you know, we had a constant static UI. So we only had like one, you know, we had like X text boxes and there was always X text boxes. All right? Here instead, we could have a bunch of different rows with edit buttons and tag buttons. So we have to go and find the row that we're interested in. So that's where we have to do the bit of grabbing the parent and then looking for the ID within the parent, within that table row. Questions about this? All right. Let's look at now what happens when we fire up the application 
if I were to close out completely and I were to restart the application. Because I think that's the one scenario we haven't covered. We talked about adding something. We talked about editing something. We talked about pressing the clear button. We talked about pressing the query button. And now we're going to talk about when we enter the application a second time. Keep in mind there's two things at work here that we keep in sync. Given it's Throwback Thursday, I should play an in sync video at this point. Yeah, but no, we're not going to. Herman and, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, SpongeBob. SpongeBob yeah. Right. Okay. There's two things going here in this application that make this application work. There is the shared preferences. Thanks. There is a shared preferences. And what shared preferences is a list. And it's an ordered list of pairs of stuff that goes together. So, in our case, we have a tag and we have a value or a query. That's what we're calling them. Probably the more formal name is key and value but we have a tag and a query. So I type in, my, my tag was Apple, let's say, and the query was iOS. The tag was AND, and the query was Android development. This gets saved like this, through the use of the shared preferences. So this is part of the total application storage. In fact, if I were to look at this application on my device, hope we can see it here, it shows how big the application is. The application is 32 KB giant application here, right? And the data is 4KB. What is that 4KB? That 4KB is the shared preferences that we remembered. Probably allocates in chunks of 4KB, so we don't have that much, that we don't have that many tags, but that's probably why it's at 4KB. Yes? Yes. Yes. It's persistent. All right? Which means that if I were to shut this off and bring it back in, It'd still have that 4 KB of data, and it would still populate it. So this is part of the application data. It's stored as a table that looks conceptually like this. Shared preferences, there's a key and a value. In our case, it's our tag and it's our query. So that's one thing, and that has persistence, which means that it stays alive from different times that you run this application. We also have the GUI. Right, which has all the text boxes and the buttons and all that. Three rows. And that is alive when the application is running. Right? Now, the application makes sure it keeps these two things in sync. All right? So if you noticed, we, everything that we did, we sort of did two things to. We set the GUI, and then we change the shared preferences, or vice versa. Depends on the order of the thing. So we're keeping, our application hits both of these. It will update the GUI, and it will update the shared preferences. Now, so from scratch, we have to build that GUI back again, because that GUI isn't persistent. The shared preferences are persistent. So let's look what happens when we fire up the app. That code will be in the onCreate method. 
And what we're doing is we're grabbing those saved searches from shared preferences. And we're calling these searches. Um, another, the, the piece that I missed when I described shared preferences is you could actually within an app have several of these lists. And in this case, this is a searches. So that table has a name. So it's not like there's just one table. You could have several little tables. And this one is our searches table. So what this is doing is this is saying grab from the shared preferences the table that's called searches and stuff it into this save searches variable. The save searches variable is an instance of shared preferences. You, correct. This is this will be app 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 specific. I believe that's what the mode private says. That would keep it um, keep it within this application. I believe. All right. So we mosey on down here. We grab a pointer to our table. We grab a pointer to our two text boxes. We set our save button listener. We set our clear button listener. We then call a method that says refresh buttons and we pass it a null. All right. We'll look at this function. This function is going to test the argument. And this function actually gets called a couple times. One time it gets called if we're creating a new tag. This function also gets called if we're loading up those shared preferences. So let's find the refresh button prefer, uh, uh, method. This button or this method we've already looked at before. We've looked at it if, we've looked at it when we've added a new tag. All right, and remember we looked through it, we looked at the Look to see if that tag is somewhere in there. Uh, we do a sort, or we add it to the save search, uh, save searches. We do a sort, and blah blah blah. Now, in the case of that initial load, this string is null. All right. So when we hit this if statement, this if statement says, "Is it not null?" All right means that there's something in it. Something in it represents that there's a new button that we have to create because we've clicked save. So this scenario we've seen before. All right. This scenario is the code that gets called when we click save and we're adding a new button to it. In our case though, when we initialize this application and we're initializing the GUI, we call this function with the value of null, therefore we execute the else. And what does the else do? The else simply leaps through, leaps, um, uh, loops through and creates a button for every tag that is in our sorted array list. Our, our sorted save searches that we pulled up here that we pulled and we sorted. So we grab all of them, we do a sort, and if it's a new one, we find out where that new one got put. or should get put. And if it's not a new one, we go in and we, uh, if it's not a new one, we go and we loop through and we simply create a button. Or, I'm sorry, not a button, but a table row that contains two buttons and a checkbox for every one in that list.
What's important about this? What's important about this is the use of the shared preferences. The use of the notion that the shared preferences is a list that we can give a name to so we can have multiple shared preferences per app. All right. And that we can store an ordered pair of data and we can use that to populate that. The other lesson I guess I would say is if you look at this code, they did a decent job of reusability here because they, um, they um, looked at and um, used, um, you know, um, used the same code to add a new button as to um, refresh all the buttons. So in one case it gets called with a null, in another case it gets called with a new tag. I think I erroneously said before, by the way, that this instruction put the new tag in the shared preferences. That happened in an earlier step. I was mistaken about that. What this does is this finds the new tag in the sorted list and uses that as the position. Remember we talked about there was a position with that GUI to find out where to put that table row? That's where it determines the position it is going to put it in. All right, by doing a binary search and finding where it belongs in the sorted array. Questions about this? Yeah, go ahead. All right. There's, a, there's aspects of this that are similar, absolutely. Here's what I want you to do. And North Ridgeville, you can go on speaker if you want. Um, I want you to take the next five minutes and think about, not necessarily write the code, but think about conceptually how I'm going to implement the functionality of making it so that when I click clear, it doesn't clear everything, but it only clears the ones that I have checked. Right now, if I click clear, it clears everything. All right? And we saw how it did it last time. There were was, there was statements in there that said, delete all the, you know, clear out the save preferences, clear out the um, GUI. So, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think through how we're going to change it. And again, not, and you can discuss among yourselves that, and I'll be back in about five minutes, and we will go over that. I'll leave this here if you want to talk to them, or you guys can push the buttons, or I'm not really sure how we can have a discussion this way, but I'll be back in a second. Yeah. 
Well, the, the other way to do it would be instead of using a checkbox, you would have a delete button on each row, and you would yeah. delete that row. You wouldn't use a checkbox. So you guys got it all worked out. I can just go home now, right? We're done for the week. Excellent. All right. What conclusions did you come to, if any? Okay. You've been you've been nominated. Uh-huh. You would get all of the rows in a collection to loop through. Okay. Read the value of that checkbox. Okay. Check. Right. Then you call a routine that clears it from the shared preferences. Okay. And then have it clear it from the view. Okay. And move on to the next one. That's not checked out and you don't do anything. If the next one's checked, then you do the same thing. Okay. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you heard in Ridgeville, the, the statement was is the strategy you're going to take is we are going to loop through the table rows. All right, going to loop through the table rows, examine them one at a time. We'll grab a reference to each table row in turn via a loop. All right, we're then going to grab a pointer to the checkbox on that table row and we're going to look to see if it's checked. If it's not checked, we don't do anything. If it is checked, we remove it from the shared preferences and we remove it from the GUI. And that sounds like a great approach. All right. I asked you to think about it um, in, uh, in advance because I needed to use the bathroom and I, because I had a cup of coffee before class today. All right. But on a serious note, it's always good to think through so you're not fighting two battles at the same time. All right, what do I mean by fighting two battles at the same time? Figuring out what you need to do and figuring out what the syntax is to do it. Now, I don't know how much of that you know how to do. You may or may not know any, how to do any of that, right? But at least you got a strategy that sounds pretty darn reasonable. All right, and we can take a look at it and we can look at the specific statements that accomplish that and so on. Now the only thing, we could do it that way. I'm going to do a slight twist on this. It's a tiny twist. I guess it really doesn't matter. But we already got a function to take care and to sync up the GUI with the shared preferences. So I'm just going to worry about the shared preferences in my loop and when I'm all done, I'm going to call that function that recreates the GUI from, from, uh, from uh, the shared preferences. Or we could do it your way. I guess it doesn't matter. That seems inefficient. Uh, I know there's a, a lot of, you know, a lot of people like to take the approach of clear all and rebuild. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good point. 
that's a good point. Would it be easier to um, get rid of all of them and recreate the ones that I wanted to keep, or would it be better just to eliminate that? That's a good point. We'll do it, we'll do it your way then. Excellent. That's, that's a good point. Um, the reason I was leaning towards doing it the other way is I already got a function that does that. I already got a function that rebuilds from that, so I could leverage that. And, and that was my thinking here. All right. Now, Unfortunately, we may or may not know how to do any of those things. So let's look at and let's, let's draw what we said to do. We have a GUI that contains our rows that contain checkboxes. However many of them there are. We have our shared preferences called searches that we can go in and have an ordered pair. So let's say A, B, C. We're going to loop through these, go loop through the GUI, a vast checkbox. If it's checked, we remove it from there, we remove it from there, and then we go on to the next one. Actually not. All right. because that could screw up my loop. Because this would be, that if I got rid of element zero, then this guy becomes element zero. You would have to put it in the collection of elements or IDs for it, which is probably using the same way as the zero base. You have to have, you have to know which one of those to remove later. So as you're looping through, you're just adding to a new array of which which one and which row you're removing. Um. You could do that. You could loop in the reverse direction. Yeah. One what? Because as soon as you take the one out, yeah. then you, your, your array that you set aside is now not going to match up with the new yeah. array that you have. Well, I know one way to solve it. <laughs> just de de yeah, just destroy and rebuild. So we'll play around with that. Maybe, maybe we'll come up with a couple different ways to do it. Um, and again, as I think about that, maybe that's why I was thinking of doing it that way. So maybe we'll try my way first, and then we'll come back to, to think of, of yours. All right. So with every problem, with every programming problem, I always encourage students, and I do this myself, to sort of take a mental inventory of what you know how to do and what you don't know how to do. All right? Now, let's think about what we know how to do here. We know how to write a loop. All right? Now, do we know how many times this loop has to execute? Maybe not. But we know how to write a loop. So we can, we're going to have a loop here. Second thing is, um, we know how to point to things. In other words, we know if we have a table row, how to find that checkbox in there. We, we probably know based on the table row. Okay. Um, we know based on the table row um, how to grab a point of that checkbox, and we know how to um, indicate that uh, whether the checkbox is checked or not. Do we know how to delete something from shared preferences? Probably not. All right. You were saying you, you had, uh, had a thought on this? Yeah. What? We give each, as we create the row, we give it an ID. It's not doing that now, but we can also start to do that. Then as we go through, when we call the re, when we, we just grab a collection of all the IDs that we need to remove and then just do two again and remove them based on the ID. 
Okay, so uh, again, we're making two passes through it. You're going to have to. Yeah, okay. All right. So let's go and look at let's go and look at these objects out there because whatever we want is bound to be associated with you know is going to be the methods that exist on the shared preference class on the view class Let's glance through the view class and what am I looking for here? I'm looking for a method that's going to tell me how many children exist. So we can just Google that. Who is Andrew Wiggins? Andrew Wiggins? Yeah, every time I start to Google Android, I see Andrew Wiggins pop up. Okay. Andrew Wiggins was like Andrew Okay, this tells us something of what we need to do. All right, because it shows us that we can ask of a view, what's your child count? All right, we can also use the get child at to grab the child in turn. So let's go up here to the clear button. And clear buttons, rather, and I'm going to comment that code out. All right. And where's the clear? All right, okay, there's the clear tags button. I'm going to comment, actually I'm going to cut this out and put it up here, comment it out, because that kind of looks like it could come in handy. Because that's the mechanism by which we edit shared preferences. And that seems like something we'd want to do. So, <coughs> I'm going to take the code we have here that loops through the children and I'm going to adapt it. All right. Which view do I want to loop through? What do I want to grab? What do I need to know how many children there are of? The table. All right. So what is the table? The table is called query table layout. So I, oh, that's OK. I'll, I'll put the, the answer up. And, if you want to make a, a different version of it, we can look at that on Tuesday. Okay. All right. Quick question about the homework we posted. You uh -huh. said it was from lab three. Did you really mean lab two, the rock, paper, scissors lab? So Probably. Was, okay, so I thought lab three was the currency converter. You're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're right. Huh. 
So I'm going to loop through once for every item in the query table layout. All right. So that's pulling out the row. It's going to go through one iteration through the loop for every table row. Okay? Now, table row I'm going to say table row next row or we'll keep it as next child. I'm going to cast it as And I'm going to cast it as a table row. Okay. So, this line, I'm looping through one iteration per thing, all right, per row in the table. Each iteration through, I'm grabbing that new table row. I'm grabbing the next table row. Now, what do I want to do after that? I want to say, I want to grab a pointer to that checkbox. So, checkbox C equals, equals what? Where are, going to, where, where are we going to look for that checkbox? In the row. Okay. What variable contains the row? Repeat, please. Next child. I probably need to import the checkbox. Let me look real quick. Yeah. Okay, there we import that. Checkbox C equals, I'm going to cast checkbox. Next child dot what? You do a find right. We have to find it before we do it. Find view by ID. And what is the ID for that checkbox? Well, it is checkbox delete. So, R dot ID dot checkbox delete. All right. So now a pointer to the checkbox. All right. What do we want to do now? If. What do you suppose that's going to look like? If C dot is checked. Then what do we want to do? Delete the row. And I'm going to take the approach of deleting it from the shared preferences. Well, gee, how do you delete something for the shared preferences? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> hope some of us know. Well, I would hope one of us knows how to do that. Well, I don't know off the top of my head, but I can look it up, right? I know, or I have a pretty good idea, that it's going to involve this shared preference editor object. All right? So let's look up that shared preference editor object and see what methods we can find for that.
All right. All right, clear would get rid of all of them. We don't want to do that. Put allows us to put a new value in here. Remove. All right, that looks like the one we're interested in. And we have to supply it a key. Okay, what do you suppose the key is going to be? The tag, exactly. If uh, if it didn't hurt to walk over there, I'd high five you. You're yeah, so you're on a you're on a roll. Yeah. Remove, and I'm going to remove the key. Now, where am I going to get the value of the tag? Well, what am I looping through? I'm looping through the rows. Where is the tag in that row? It's in the button, all right? So I'm going to go and say, button B equals cast as button. Where am I going to find it? Table row. Next child. Find view by ID. And what do I put in parentheses there? Whatever his ID is, which is new tag button. So now I'm pointing at the button. So what's my key going to be? Key equals well the text from that button, right? So I'm going to say b dot get text exactly. <laughs> to string. Absolutely. And then I'm going to go and re now I have the key. I can remove it from the preferences. Now, when I'm all done with this loop, I already have a function that's going to recreate my GUI from the shared preferences. This guy up here. Refresh buttons <coughs> null. The other thing I need to do is I need to, I almost forgot to do this, and I'd have been scratching my head two minutes from now. I need to commit those changes. So I will, or apply them. So I will say, actually, this line. See, I knew those lines would come in handy, right? Because they look kind of like the things that we wanted to do. We don't want to get rid of all of them, we want to get rid of some of them. Yep. Yep. It's kind of a thing that you can like, it's almost like in a database where you have commit versus rollback. Yeah, so you could, you could go through, make some changes, and then say, ah, never mind, cancel. Or, yeah, I do want to do this and, and commit. Um, because, because that would be a little extra processing, all right, as opposed to applying for every single change, I'm going to wait till I've made all the changes and then just apply all of them at once. All right, so 
I could do it there, no big deal, but I might as well just wait till the end. Just like I don't do the refresh buttons until the end, because I might as well. Now, let's make sure that this works. It would be a shame if I went through this long, elegant explanation and like the thing blew up, and so we'll, we'll see. Oh, it's starting a stupid emulator. And to paraphrase a classic internet meme, ain't no one's got time for that. All right, here we go. All right, what's going on here, folks? All right. Unplug it. Plug it in. Make sure it's all set. I'll give it a chance to think about it for a second because maybe I'm a little premature trying to run it. All right, here we go. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to have to add a couple for this to work, for, for us to even test it. All right, so I'll just go in and add a save, B, save, C, save, and I'm just going to pick the delete B. So I check B, click clear selected tags. All right, that text is wrong. I'll click erase. And oh, it almost worked. Did you see what it did? Do it again? All right, let's get rid of this and this. Every time I go to delete stuff, it's adding stuff. Why is it doing that? No. <laughs> What's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> All right. Here is the idea. All right. I'm refreshing. I'm recreating the GUI. All right. But the old GUI is still there. So I should get rid of everything and then recreate the GUI. So what I need to do is say query table layout dot, does anyone remember the method, clear or remove all or? It was, but I just deleted those extra things. Remove all views. So, first I'm going to clear out my GUI. Then I'm going to go in and recreate it. So, I'm not sure what would happen if I went and run this now. So I'm going to uninstall it. So I can start with a clean slate. And then we'll go in and 
Then we'll go in and test it out. This is weird. I made him plug in. Yeah, I mean, it was working a second ago. I think what's happening is I didn't, I did not have the thing plugged in correctly. So let's give it a second. Well, it should at least ask, provided that the uh, yeah, provided that the API is correct on the device. Um, all right, there we go. Yeah, I just I don't think I had it plugged in right. All right, so we go here. Yeah. I go enter, A, A, save, B, B, save, C, C, save. All right, I come here, I click, I want to just get rid of B. All right, and I click drum roll please. Are you sure? And look, it got rid of B. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, I don't know how much you guys caught the discussion between me and I'm forgetting this fellow's name. Okay. Um, the issue that he talked about is he doesn't like, he didn't like the fact, he thought it could be inefficient that I clear everything out and recreate the GUI. He said that that could be inefficient. And it could be, I would think with the kind of volume of data that we're talking about here, we're not talking about thousands of rows, we're talking about maybe dozens of rows, probably not a big deal either way. But his point would be, his point was instead of deleting and recreating, as I delete it from the shared preference, to delete it from the GUI at the same time. Now, the reason I didn't like that approach is that it actually gets more complicated than that. Because remember, I'm looping through starting at zero and going for as many children as they're there. Well, guess what if I start deleting rows from the child while I'm in a loop that is counting the child, the child's children? Yeah, so in other words, it's not straightforward. One thing I've done in the past that you kind of don't run into is if you loop backwards. So I, I could probably write this loop to go in reverse to look at the last one and then deleting it would be less of an issue. Alright, so that would be one way to do it. Maybe we'll look at that on, on um, whatever the next time we meet is. Alright, Tuesday. Um, so, again, for Sam, since I cheated her out of five minutes of class yesterday, I've given an extra 10, so I've paid back that with interest, all right? Yeah, that's pretty good, pretty good interest, yeah. Uh, but we'll look at that next time to, to try to do this all in one swoop. And yeah, I'll, I'll post this example. Any questions in Ridgeville? Any questions here? All right, I will post this example. Uh, next time we'll look at possibly writing it um, to do it where you didn't rebuild it. You did it on the fly, and then we'll go from there. All right. Have a great weekend. Is anyone staying for lab? All right. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I would say. <laughs>